This is a story from Dr. Seuss called The Rabbit, The Bear, and The Zinniga Zaniga. Once of upon a time, way down south, lived a very big bear with a very big mouth and very big teeth in his very big jaws and very big claws in his very big paws. And this very big bear, who was hunting for meat, one day spied a rabbit who looked good to eat. Aha, thought the bear. He looks tender, all right. Oh boy, I'll have rabbit for supper tonight. So on his big feet, he crept up to the rabbit he crouched very low and leaned forward to grab it. But just as his jaws were about ready to nab it, the rabbit looked up and he saw the bear's face. Uh-oh, gulped the rabbit. I'm in a bad place. I cannot escape and I see with a glance that it's no use to fight because I haven't a chance. For I am a rabbit with very small jaws and very small claws in my very small paws. Alas, thought the rabbit, this moment's my last, unless I think terribly, terribly fast. I've got to be smart, got to think of some trick. And that little old rabbit, he thought mighty quick. Then, just as the teeth of the bear touched his head, the rabbit jumped up, and he suddenly said, One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine? Only nine? That's a very bad sign. Poor bear, sighed the rabbit. Then he counted again. And this time, he counted from one up to ten. Huh, the bear grunted. He stared and he stopped. He looked mighty puzzled. His jaw sort of dropped. Now, what were you counting then? What did you see? Do you mean to say something's the matter with me? Er... Uh, well, said the rabbit from down where he stood, I sure hate to tell you, it isn't too good. I was counting the eyelashes round your two eyes, your left eye, your right eye, and to my surprise, they weren't the same number. Almost, but not quite. You've ten on your left eye, but nine on your right. I'm sorry. So sorry, but sir, it is true. Poor bear, this is dreadful. One eyelash, too few. The bear looked upset. He looked frightfully sad. Good gracious, he gasped. Is that really so bad? Er, uh, well, said the rabbit, I've counted the hairs that grow on the eyelids of hundreds of bears, and I always have noticed, in adding up theirs, that they always come out to an even amount. But yours, Mr. Bear, make an uneven count. And I guess that's the reason, the rabbit then said, for the lopsided way that you're holding your head. It's twisted, it's sagging. Because of the weight of your uneven eyelashes, you can't hold it straight. My head? groaned the bear with an unhappy roar. Why, I never knew it was crooked before. But now that you say so, it does feel quite funny. I'll bet that it hurts you a lot, said the bunny. 
I'll bet that it hurts you right down to your tail. My, my, Mr. Bear, you look horribly pale. Say, how does your throat feel? A little bit prickly? It does, moaned the bear, and my stomach feels tickly. Poor me, cried the bear. I feel all over sickly, said the rabbit. It's just as I reckoned. Your ailment is getting much worse by the second. Your tongue, Mr. Bear, does it taste a bit fuzzy? Your brain, Mr. Bear, does it feel a bit wuzzy? Why, yes, gasped the bear. It most certainly does. Is that a bad sign, all that fuzz and that was? It is, said the rabbit. Alas and alack, it's a sign that your trouble has spread to your back. For even right now, while I'm standing here speaking, I hear a loud sound from your backbone. It's creaking. Oh, the lack of an eyelash can make you a wreck. The lack of an eyelash can break a bear's neck. It can break all your ribs. It can ruin your heart. Who knows what might happen? You may fall apart. Be careful, poor bear. Don't you even dare cough, or your feet and your tail and your nose may fall off. And he gave that big bear such a sorrowful look that the bear started trembling. He shook and he shook. Ah, oh, me, the bear blubbered. Oh, what can I do? Must I die just because of one eyelash too few? Oh, how can I get one more eyelash to grow? Uh, well, smiled the rabbit. It happens, I know, of a way you might do it. You're standing, you see, right under a Zinniga Zaniga tree. Now, the flowers of this tree have some wonderful juices that doctors have put to some marvelous uses. Their juice, I am told, is so strong that it cures sicknesses even much greater than yours. The juice of these flowers cures measles and mumps. The juice of these flowers cures freckles and bumps. Whooping cough, croup, also colic and sprains, chicken pox, smallpox, and bellyache pains. There's nothing, they say, that this juice cannot do. So I think, Mr. Bear, it's the right juice for you. What you ought to do, least it seems to me, is climb up this Zinniga Zaniga tree and pick yourself one of these wonderful flowers. Hold it tight to your eye for a couple of hours. And I know it'll cure you, I haven't a doubt. For the lash you are lacking will suddenly sprout. You mean, cried the bear, I'll have ten on each eye? You mean, cried the bear, that I don't have to die? Oh, thanks, cried the bear. You are wonderfully good. And he climbed up that tree just as fast as he could. And while that big bear held the flower to his face, the rabbit, rabbit, like lightning, raced off from that place. And thus he escaped from the very big jaws of that very big bear with the very big claws. And he laughed as he ran on his very small paws. It's always the same when you fight with big guys. A quick bit of thinking counts much more than size. <laughs>